Hi folks, Jeb here with Together Made, and today we're gonna do our, our new knife case kit. So this kit can be done in a number of styles. Um, we're gonna focus on doing the straight stitching today, but there is a, an op alternative to do a crossover stitch. Uh, if you're interested in doing that stitch, um, you can see the compass case uh, after we get the holes punched. This, uh, this style here, I just did a bunch of tooling on. Um, same, same kit, this one's a straight stitch, but I spent a bunch of time tooling it out before I sewed it. Uh, and then this is just a clean one with a stamp and a little bit of an edge detail. So you can decide for yourself how you wanna kind of um, style it. We're gonna focus on the, the, the pricking iron today and, and setting the holes. Um, that's the new skill. Uh, if you've done our previous kits, like the journal kit or the wallet or any number of the, the other kits, um, they came with the holes punched for you. So you might get a piece that looks like this that has the holes punched in it. Well, now we're gonna learn this next step in our progression in, as leather craftspeople. So uh, what we had to come up with in order to enable this next step is we need to be able to set a nice line to be able to, to use our stitching chisels uh, to, to cut the holes. Um, so let's just kind of go through what we have in the kit and then we'll, and what's gonna be required to do this and then we'll start, we'll start working it out. So this is the new tool, this is the slicker um, that also has groove uh, op options on it. We're gonna use this 3 16 groove here. That's the, the stitch distance I like. Uh, and there's a piece of sandpaper uh, that we're going to use to get that how we want it before we start using it. You've got your case and you've got your side pieces. The side pieces are identical. The curve on the side pieces goes to the top. You've got some thread and a set of harness needles. We're going to get those harness needles out. Uh, if you bought the kit uh, with the irons, uh, this is the C.S. Osborne pricking iron that that we designed this kit for. Uh, so that's what we're gonna use today. Uh, and if you didn't get these and you need them, they're on the site. Um, the kit also has uh, a little tin of Smith's Leather Balm, uh, which is uh, an added treat. Uh, this stuff's great to work with. So we'll use that when we get to the burnishing phase. All right, so you're obviously gonna need something to punch into. I've got a punching mat here. You can use a plastic cutting board or you know, a thick piece of leather or something like that. Um, and then we've got a mallet. And this is the mallet that we stock from, from Osborne. Um, it's a, a nice solid uh, mallet. You're not gonna wanna use a metal hammer or anything like that. You wanna use something that's, that's gonna be easy on your tools but has a bit of heft to it. So there's that. Um, you know, if you're gonna be doing your edge detailing um, with say, uh, this beveler, you know, now would be the time to do some beveling. Um, if you're gonna use a creaser to set any lines in, in the sides, like I, like I did around this case here with, with this creaser, um, now would be the time to do that. Um, but we're not gonna focus on those techniques today. Um, I will say, if you're going to uh, do the edge trimming, um, think about how these pieces go together and you're only gonna wanna trim um, the faces. So if you're gonna bevel the edge, bevel just the face edges um, so that you don't end up with a gap as these come together. Um, so, but it is easier to do the beveling um, before you start sewing. We can do it before or after we set the stitch holes. All right, so I'm gonna set my needles aside and so let's grab our groover. And this 3 16 mark here, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my sandpaper and I'm just gonna soften the, the edges of that so that they're not scratchy. Um, I, I need to leave a mark with them uh, so they have to have some definition, but I, I don't want it to catch. So I'm just kind of easing the edges a little bit. Um, and if you have something a scrap around uh, to practice on. Uh, it'd be kind of good to get uh, some practice in. Um, I'm just gonna check this here. So I'm just 
putting it on with that towards the, the point towards the inside and that little foot that goes down just kind of rides along the edge and I get this nice straight line uh, that I can lay my stitches in. Um, I'm left-handed, it'll work both ways. Um, so I'm going to put that on. And for these guys, we're just going to run the lines all the way up and down. And there we go. There we go. Okay, so I've got grooves in both of these guys. Now, we're going to have to do uh, uh, some decision work with where we want the grooves in this piece. So what we're going to do is I've set the stitch pattern so that uh, the top stitch here and here starts 3 16 away um, from the top. So I've got my 3 16 marker here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that and just sort of eyeball make maybe a little indentation at 3 16 nothing, nothing uh, that, that's going to be permanent. And you can, kind of, you can kind of just lay this up here and see. Let's not go past right now the end and draw a line all the way around. But let's just, let's just mark this and go from that 3 16 that we have at the top and go down till basically we're at the where, where this ends so if that makes sense so what i'm doing is i've just said i'm going to lay this one up against it i'm going to go from my 3 16 mark here and then i'm just going to run that groove uh, to match up with this one uh, and then i'm going to do the same thing on the other side i'm going to come down 3 16 i've got a little a little mark there you know have to put the mark, but you can kind of just get close. And then I'm going to go from that mark down to where that ends. And so I'm just kind of going to go back over those, give myself a nice groove to work with. So this does a couple things. One is it gives us a straight line, but the other is that uh, it, it does allow the stitches to sort of lay down flat in there so they're a little bit protected. Okay, so I like how that looks. You know, it could be a little bit longer and, you know, we can always come back and make it a little bit longer. Um, and, you know, if you want to be precise about this, we can take a ruler um, and you can just sort of measure, um, I don't have a ruler on the table right now, but you can just sort of measure uh, your length and go from your, your 3 16 down to, you know, down to another mark at the bottom. Um, we're trying not to put a bunch of, of marks in the leather, so just kind of, mostly, I mostly go by eye when I'm setting these um, so that we're not leaving marks, um, but that's how that goes. Okay, so, so we've got our, our grooves here, and we're going from 3 16 down to the, the end to match up with these side pieces. And the way that this um, lines up is I've set it so that, I'll put a close-up of this, but I've set it so that if I put um, the second tooth if I line the second tooth of the iron up, uh, so it goes first tooth, gap, second tooth, the top of the second tooth, if I line that up with the top of the belt holder slot, um, that's where I want to start, okay? So I got an idea of, of, of where I want to be there. Um, and so I'm just going to, I'm going to draw a groove along the side of the slot. So I've got a starting point, this groove here. I've kind of gone from the slot down, maybe three quarters of an inch past the slot. And I'm just going to eyeball following with the top of the second. Uh, and I'm going to put that uh, mark down. So 
Um, and then what I can do here is just set this piece next to it um, and I'm going to give myself that groove from, uh, from that mark I made down. Okay, so I'm going to say that again. So I'm going to make a groove that runs, uh, again, 3 16 groove that runs along the belt slot. Okay, so I've got this nice groove. Uh, I'm taking my iron, I'm lining the top of the second prong in up with the top of the belt slot and then I'm just going to come over at that height and that's my stitch position start. So you can see that you know, I'm just a little bit above there with my first hole and then so I'm going to run my groove from that hole down. Um, to be equal with this. So we can come up a little bit short, uh, maybe an eighth or so, but that doesn't really matter. Okay. All right, so that looks about right. That looks about right. And, you know, if you need to put a little bit more of a groove in, um, if, if you didn't go quite far enough, you can. Um, cool. And it is an option to just go all the way around. I will say that um, this tool is great for straights, um, but if you're going to try and get up into these corners um, and set a margin in something that's round, um, it, it takes some practice. I wouldn't necessarily do that without a bunch of practice. Um, so, okay, so here we are, we've got grooves and everything, and we're going to start, I'd say let's just start in, in this guy, um, he's a little bit easier to explain. So, all we're doing here is there's going to be, these are, this is a four prong tool, this is set to have 20 stitches. So, um, the way that I set this pattern to work is, we're going to use the inside edge of the first tooth. We're going to set that against the top edge and we're going to use that as our starting point. Okay, so I've, I'm going to leave three little marks there because I, I've got the first tooth hanging off the edge and then I've got um, those next three there and so that gives us a little buffer at the top. Um, I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom. So I'm just going to use the edge of that first tooth and I'm going to, I'm just marking right now, um, just so that as I start punching, um, you know, things can get off a little bit. And if I know where I want to end up, then I can kind of make it work. Um, okay, so I'm going to do that again. So now I know what my bottom looks like on that side. And now I know what my top looks like on that side. So um, I've just left little impressions. What is a good idea to do your first time is uh, to, to just do that marking uh, from top to bottom, so from here to here. Um, and what you do is you use um, the leading, or the I guess you'd say the first prong, um, the one closest to you, uh, and you just stick that in the previous, the last of the previous marks, and that get, keeps your spacing. So you're just using that as an index to work your way down. So I'm going to work my way down, uh, putting this first prong in the last of the previous marks. So that's leaving three new marks each time. And then I just kind of work my way down. And if I get to the bottom and I don't quite line up, uh, which, you know, that just happens quite a bit, um, then I can work my way up from the bottom uh, and work that out. So I want to have 20 marks. So uh, I'm going to do this side. And it really helps to be looking straight down the line. So it's, it's easier to get off if you're, if, to get off the track if you're, um, if you're holding it side to side. It's easier to stay in track 
if you, you know, are, and you know, maybe I'll bring this closer to me to demonstrate, um, you really do want to make sure you're getting those in that groove and straight. This is the difference between something looking really great and something looking not so hot. So this one lined up pretty well with, um, with the bottom. Um, this one wasn't as, as clean, so I can come back and just sort of make sure I know where those holes are. Uh, the important thing is that uh, I end up with 20 and that they're pretty close to the right spot. All right, so I did that one. Um, we'll do the same thing on the other one. Um, I'm going to start at the top, index, start at the top, index, off of the top edge. And this time I'm just going to work my way down. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so that is going to be four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, and twenty. So double check and make sure you have twenty on each side. Um, so all right, so now we're going to punch these holes. So what I'm going to do, I'll start at the top edge. I'll find my mark. And find my mark here. And then I'm just going to get my prongs in there and give it a little, little whack. And I want to make sure that I'm, I'm coming through. You don't need to go so far in that you, like, can't get your irons out of, you know, your mat. Because um, we can always, when we're sewing, come back through with an awl um, and open stuff up if we need to. But I like to get it through. And I'm always using the previous punched holes as an index for the next set of holes keeps my spacing perfectly aligned and equidistant. So just make sure that you are all in line and then tap through. All right, so that's looking good. I've got my 20 holes pretty much in the right spots, so success. So these should just index in. I'm going to go this way. When I say index in, they're just lining up with the marks that I made earlier. And then I'm going to work my way down, paying attention to every single time I do this, paying attention to if things are lined up. That little lose focus for a second sometimes while you're in this, and maybe you put in a set of crooked ones. And you know, if that's the case, you know sometimes you can hide it, and sometimes sometimes you can't. So we just pay attention. Okay. So in this last one is just one. So I'm using. I've got one hole remaining, and I've got three in the previous holes. All right, cool. So that's what that guy looks like. I've got one pre-punched the other side. So now we're going to do this one. So we're going to start 3 16 in. Remember that from the top edge. And we're going to work our way down our 20 stitches. Okay, so I'm going to start at that 3 16 from the top edge. This is thicker leather, so you may want to do this um, in a couple passes. Um, 
Makes it a little bit easier. Okay. I love this. I find this to be super relaxing and just kind of fascinating every time, just taking my time and getting it done. So I'm just double checking, making sure that looks like where I want it to be. And I just have that one last hole. So we are, and you know, that looks good. So I'm going to do this next one, and I'm going to start at that 3 16 mark. It looks like, yep, yeah, that's lined up with the other side, so that's good. In straight. There we go. There we go. Okay, when we come down to the last one, just make sure it's where we want. This is all pretty straightforward. Sometimes you need to um, use a different iron, you know, like a, a two prong or a one to, to kind of cheat a little bit if something got off and just, or if it's just, you know, the spacing doesn't work in the pattern and you need to bring a couple closer together to make the, the margin at the end be where you want it. That's the important thing, is that they end at the right place. One of the important things. All right, so now we're going to come and do these ones. And remember, our mark was from the, s e the e top edge of the second blade um, over to our 3 16 groove, um, but that top edge being lined up with, with the belt buckle slot. So I've got that marked on here. I am going to put that guy in. That guy in. thick that time. All right. Cool. So let's do this last one. Got my mark I'm on my 3 16 line. That second blade is lined up with that top of that belt slot. I'm in there straight. It's going to follow my 3 16 groove. one again. All right. So that's how it looks. We've got our 20 holes. Now and we're going to that together, take a look at it. Cool. So that looks great. So now we're going to do our saddle stitch. Um, we're not going to show all of this saddle stitch. Uh, if you want to see like a step by step, the compass case kit video um, 
I think we sort of covered every stitch on that one. It's the exact same kind of construction. Um, there's some options, but I'll get you started here. Um, and then we'll cut back in for the finishing on this. Okay, so this is our wax poly. I, if you're going to do the alternative stitch, um, you're going to want to use a full, um, a full one of these hanks. Um, it's about six feet. If you're just going to do the straight stitch, um, then you can cut this in half. So I'm just going to demonstrate the straight stitch on this one. The alternative stitch is, is in a, uh, another video on our YouTube channel. Um, that we demo it for the compass case. Okay, so we're going through the eye, pulling about six inches through the eye, about two inches from the end. We pierce the thread, so we're going through the middle of the thread, so it's, you see it's on there. And then we just pull that down over the eye and lock it in. Okay, we're gonna do that on the other end. Sometimes you gotta pinch it a little bit flatter to get it through there. Okay, and then I'm gonna poke through. All right, so now I've got one of these on each end. I'm gonna start, and you can see on this on this big on the on the thick stuff, the outside case. Um, I could have come back and done a second pass with with the irons, and I may end up doing that, or I can just open these up with this little scratch all, which I think I'll just do because it's, they're almost all the way through. It's just getting that last little bit. So, Cook. oh, here we go. All right, so I've opened those up. I'm gonna make it easier to stitch. So I'm gonna line the top edges up I'm going to start in either the third or fourth hole, your choice. Uh, we're going to start down there, and, and that, that'll allow us to double up the first couple stitches. Um, so, so we're starting there, and I'm going to start in hole three. Um, and then I'm going to go through hole two from this side. If it's tight, give it a little wiggle. And then I'm going to go back through hole two with the other needle. So now I've gone through hole two from both sides. I'm going to pull that snug. I'm going to make sure that I got the top lined up. Got a little bit of wiggle room until I make these next couple stitches and then it's not going anywhere. So I'm coming through one side and then I'm coming through back through from the other. So we're just, that's just a saddle stitch and We've done those first couple from hole three to two to one. And now I've got both coming out of hole one. And now I'm going to work my way back down. So uh, I'm going to come through hole two from this side. And then I'm going to take the other needle, which is still coming out of hole one, and I'm going to go through hole two from the other side. And all that's doing is just reinforcing those top stitches with a double stitch. Which in a piece like this you want because you're going to be getting in and out of there and stressing that, stressing those stitches up there. And this thread's really strong, so just doing two up there is plenty. Okay, so now I've got those double stitches done. I went from three to two to one, and from then back down to three. And now I'm just gonna saddle stitch my way down. Um, so I'm in hole four from that one side, and now I'm going through hole four from the other side, like so. And I'm just gonna do that until I get to the bottom. And then I'm gonna back stitch uh, a couple of stitches um, so I'll do it on this one side, and then you'll have the right, the right pattern to use on the other sides. All 
I'm going to go grab a stitching pony. I'll hold this. I'll make it a little faster for you. So this is the Dream Factory stitching pony. I really like these. Certainly not necessary, but makes things go a little faster. You can have to hold the piece while you put the stitches in as well. So. All right. So we're going to work our way down to Not much to this, you know, the thing in terms of making it clean is to pull nice and snug. You don't want to pull so hard that you're tearing the leather, um, but you do want to snug this up. You really don't want to leave your stitches proud. Um, it doesn't look as nice and it also, um, there'll be some wear as things rub up against. Okay, so I'm just working my way down, coming through each side, pulling that thread out of the way, coming through in the opposite direction, pulling it snug, and repeat. Oh, sometimes if it catches a little bit and you want to just come through the other side and open it up, and that's where, you know, taking your awl and just kind of gently getting things lined up and opened up. Hmm, that, one is, that one is not punched all the way through. Just be careful that what you won't want to do, I'm going to just stop here, because what I don't want to do is force through that stitch hole and end up coming through the front side and um, leaving a big ugly mark. So I'm just going to open those up and then um, and then come back and do the stitching. So there we go. Let me get this guy out of the way. All right. Okay. And if something goes wrong, can always kind of work your way backwards. And you should have enough thread in your kit that if something goes terribly wrong, just start over. Meaning cut the thread and you work your way back through it uh, with a clean thread. Um, sometimes you just, if you get into a wonky situation, it's usually, uh, if you've kind of had a little misstep, but at the same time you've also like sewn through the thread, and then it's just hard to, to kind of get that untangled. Um, so way to avoid that is to pull back out of the way. There's all kinds of techniques for this. Some of them involve um, kind of using the needle and basically pushing both needles through the, through the uh, hole at the same time, um, then there's no way that the tip of the needle can, can pierce the thread. Um, I find that you know, I can get into a rhythm and do that, and it's kind of fun. 
But I, I find that if I just pull it back out of the way um, and then come in underneath that, um, that I don't typically have any problems. Okay. All right, so now I've made it to the end, and we're going to backstitch. And you just have to think about where you want to leave your knots. Um, we put those couple double stitches in up at the top. So we see to think about we're gonna, where we're going to leave our thread, um, our tag ends. So I'm going to make this stitch back up. One. I'm going to come back through that. And I'm pulling down out of the way, kind of in the opposite direction to make room for that. So that's one. Now, uh, I am just going to come through the front side and so now I've got those two doubled up and those two doubled up. Um, if you chose to do um, three at the top, three double stitches, then I would do that. Now, I'm just going to cut these to about an eighth of an inch. Um, when I'm doing, uh, doing this, I, I usually use a, a, like a thread melting tool. Um, uh, I don't have a lighter on me right now, but uh, you just melt the ends of those lightly. So, um, again, the tag ends are, are here on the side. Um, for the back of the case, um, you know, you could put those tag ends uh, back here if you want, or you can put them in the side here. Uh, it's just sort of a personal preference. Okay, so now, you know, the thing to think about in terms of how you go about this is, um, you know, once you start to have it bent, then, you know, it's not as free sewing. So what I'd like to do is do the other side uh, of the front and then do the same thing uh, on the back side, okay? So we've got to do that a few times uh, and then you end up you know, here. Um, and, you know, the last step in this is, is your burnishing. So, um, I'm just going to walk you through that real quick. Um, I think I'll use, I will use this as a demo, um, even though it's not done. So, assume or pretend uh, that you've got all that sewing done. Uh, now, what you're going to do is, these things should be pretty well lined up, but if they're not, you can always take this sandpaper and smooth it out a little bit. I'm not going crazy. And if you have something lighter grit, um, feel free to use that. But I'm just going to kind of touch that up a little bit. Um, if I have any kind of furry stuff, I might want to just kind of lightly sand at that. Um, it will kind of raise that fur furry stuff up if you get after it too hard. So, you know, just easy stuff. Okay. so. I've got those smooth, uh, and what I'm going to do is take a little bit of water. Um, I've got some water here under the table. Um, and I've got this, this nice Smith's Leather Balm. Uh, really excited that they've got this size. Um, this stuff smells great. It's cocoa butter, 100% pure, sweet almond oil, organic cocoa butter, and beeswax. So, you know, this stuff um, is really nice to work with. Um, so, but what I'm going to do, first thing is we've got this slicker tool, and it needs to kind of get uh, tuned up a little bit. So, um, we're going to pick which groove we want, uh, and I'm going to think that this kind of middle size one is the right size. And what I'm going to do is I'm really going to round that out. I don't want it to be scratchy, so I am just, I just sort of fold that over on itself. Uh, to make it round, and I'm just rounding this out. And it's a little bit more than easing the edges. This is like actually kind of rounding it out, and then just kind of making sure that there's, n there's no sharp edges. Okay, so, and then I'm just going to rub it on there a little bit and make sure that it doesn't um, catch it all. And our first step could just be putting a little bit of water on there, um, and then taking that slicker tool and it 
it's making a little bit of a sticky noise, which is, that's the noise I want to hear. Um, that's really doing a nice job. So I'm just kind of working that back and forth. And it's glazing the edge. I'm not putting a ton of pressure on it. Um, so it's sealing it, it's rounding it over, it's giving it a really nice kind of glossy look. Okay, so I did that, and I would go ahead and do that everywhere. If we look at, say, the lid, we're going to do the same thing with the lid. I'm just going to get it wet, just on the edges, and then I'm going to take that same size, that middle size one, and I'm just going to work it, and go around this little curve here. Okay. And it's doing the same thing. It's giving it a glossy look, rounding it over, come out to the corners and work your way around the corner. Be careful not to, to get this thing turned um, and, and marking the face of your leather. You really just want to kind of come in perpendicular and Maintain that control. Okay, so, so that's the first step is just the water. Get this sanded out and then get that going. Okay, so now what we can do is we can take this Smith's or some saddle soap or whatever. And I like this because it's got, it's got beeswax in it, right? And so when I finish, um, Sometimes I'll just use, you know, a thing of beeswax, um, but I like this Smith stuff. I think it's really nice to work with. Um, and I'll show you another, another thing with it in a second. Okay, so I've got that on there. And, you know, this is pretty smoothed over already. So I'm just kind of working it in uh, and continuing. And man, does that look nice. So the last step, is to get a piece of canvas and and just kind of buff it, okay? And that just shines it up, moves that beeswax around, spreads it around. You know, if you have any anything you need to touch up, like it's a little proud up here, um, then I can come back, you know, with my groove with my uh, slicker uh, and. I'm, I can just work that little area, make that look how I want. Come back with a little bit more of this. Okay, so I'll come back and do, do that. You just kind of work at it until you end up where you like. Okay, so that's what that, what that looks like, and I think that looks really nice. Um, you know, if you've got a kit, uh, that came with the Smiths, or if you ordered some, uh, we sell the larger tins too, um, then when your case gets to looking like this, so uh, we just got some goats and, you know, I wore this thing for a few weeks working, um, you know, I'm building pens and crawling on the ground underneath the building we built and all that, and so it's a little scuffed up now. Um, so I'm just going to come back with this Smith, and I'm just going to work it in, I need to use my fingers because the ingredients are so pleasant. And, you know, it's just going to restore that finish in a really beautiful way. Uh, and then, you know, if my edges start to get a little rough again, so, you know, these are getting a little rough, um, I'm just going to come back and do the same steps again. Okay, so, you know, you've, you've got a little wiggle room here. So I'm going to, I got those wet, I'm going to use this same slicker. Okay, and so that's cleaned that right up. And then I'm going to apply the wax or the, the Smiths to that edge. Work that in with my fingers. Come back with my canvas. This is just like a 12 ounce duck cloth. Can't kind of use anything that, that the canvas just has a little bit of 
kind of abrasion to it, but not a lot. Oh, it's nice. It just kind of makes that stuff blend right in. All right. So, you know, I've taken that case that, that had taken a beating and, you know, brought it back to life. And so if you've got a kit with that in it, this stuff's great. Um, works great on boots. Works great on any kind of leather product you need to, to restore. So, okay. So that is our knife case kit. Um, congrats on that build. Um, if you have questions about uh, this stitch, again, there's another video on that uh, underneath the compass case. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I think this is a, is a really classy knife case. I hope folks make them for people for, for gifts and hope that folks make them for themselves and they get a lot of use out of them. Um, this Buck 110. Uh, is is a great a great everyday carry, um, very practical utilitarian, um, has a lot of uses. So anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed that, and uh, we'll see you next time.